Good evening. This is John Bailey, and this is People to Be Heard, the program where people who have something to say have their say. And tonight, you've got Richard Cerulli, White Plains playwright, novelist, and now producer of a new movie called An Existential Date at the Wolf and Warrior this spring. Now, it is in White Plains, New York, and that will be joining Mr. Cerulli on set in the suit in a few minutes. Meanwhile, I am setting the scene for you. Richard, tell us about your new movie, now in production stage, The Existential Day, An Existential Day. Oh, thank you, John. Um, yeah, what I <clears throat> really did is when I started writing An Existential Day, it was pretty much the result of uh, two forces. One was the uh, the fellow troop members or founding members who kept prodding me to write a comedy. And they said, you know, all your plays and your books are deep, moral, existential pieces and, you know, rather dark, you know, and you're a pretty funny guy. Why don't you do a comedy? And I thought that was fair enough. And then also in light of COVID and all the social unrest, I thought, you know, let's do something where we could, um, you know, maybe we could find ourselves united with, you know, good art and a little bit of humor. So I combined the existential thinking with a little bit of gallows humor. <laughs> and tell us what is existentialism? Well, in a nutshell, it's just such a broad topic. It's uh, basically, it's a philosophy and it's a broad band, uh, uh, <clears throat> bandwidth. I mean, as a philosopher, you could be a theologian, an atheist, an agnostic, uh, so it's not an exclusive club. Um, and it's basically taking our life from <clears throat> existence and bringing it to essence and mm -hmm. trying to maximize our, you know, our moral experience. Yeah. A moral experience. So how does a rela relationship between existentialists work? How is it different from, and what does the movie bring out? Well, what I did is I thought I had a little bit of humor with this. Um, you know, being a former professor, there's a lot of stereotypes, you know, they, you know, people are quick to project how professors are supposed to act. And there's just always this, you know, this very arrogant, stuffy, aloof distance. So I played on that and I just bought these two professors, you know, aging professors at a university and they meet at the college pub, at this existential pub. Uh, the Debbie Task Cafe, of course, and it's and also injecting a lot of romance into it, and also uh, trying to debunk the myth that um, youth doesn't have a monopoly on romance, and that existential talk can actually be very sexy and romantic. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's nothing more sexier than an existentialist. Uh, I, mean, I, I couldn't what? agree more. Absolutely, I mean, it's right. a great aphrodisiac. Yeah. <laughs> now, tell us about your new movie in production stage now. Um, how long did it take you to shoot? When and when can White Plains see it? All right. Well, what we did on this one, since it's my first movie, uh, we call it um, Psychothronic Works, which is just a very fancy name for mm -hmm. short works. And it's, it's a one hour play. Uh, we've rehearsed for about three months. We really wanted to get the cast really in character. And the actual shoot was really about three days, one day prepping, two days actual shooting, because we really wanted to really focus on the dialogue between the two main characters. And, and I thought we just, I think if we went longer than that, I think we would have lost the quote essence of the, uh, uh, of the uh, of the work, mm -hmm. and uh, who are your stars? Well, I was very fortunate uh, taking the uh, one of the lead roles of uh, Camus is um, Rob Ambrose, who was with the troupe now for about uh, three years, and he made his debut in Thoughts for a Lost Friend, which was he made a, a phenomenal, moving performance, and that's on our website. And then the um, his counterpart is played, or uh, Nietzsche is played by uh, Donna L. White, a phenomenal actress. First time she's making her uh, debut with the Debbie Das Players. And 
the uh, waiter is uh, Michelle Osaniak, if I'm pronouncing it correct. And she's making her debut. And I couldn't have picked a better cast, you know, and I'd probably have to thank uh, the uh, casting director, uh, Susan Bond, for, uh, for bringing those, you know, two of the characters together. And uh, the chemistry between the two is perfect. I don't think I could, could have picked, you know, uh, two better people for the roles. <laughs> what was difficult about adopting a play to a movie environment? Yeah, it, it was, was difficult. Yeah, it was as difficult as it was fun. Uh, you know, one aspect of it is when you go into cinema, you have a little more flexibility of bringing a lot of elements into the, into the performance that you can't do on a play. You're pretty limited. So uh, that helped out quite a bit to set the stage for the play with, you know, the pre-movie piece. And I was very fortunate to have uh, Chris Casaberry, who um, we knocked it off very well. I brought him as a cinematographer and also the director. And the chemistry was really good between us. You know, it's, um, we were just, we were both like popcorn. It's just picking out all these ideas and sputtering. And, uh, it, <laughs> and it seemed to gel well. We worked well and we, um, he was just on point and he used it. He was good with the cinema, bringing in the right elements, the whole bit. And, um, and I also brought in uh, Drew Keiko, who's the musical director who usually rearranges my work. But on this one, I said, I'll let the butcher cut the meat. And I told him he could write and perform the theme song, which is an existential moment. So, uh, and, <laughs> and, and he's actually takes a small part in the movie. He plays a very <laughs> existential part. I see. Um, now we're going to take a slight break here and we're going to switch over to Chris, who's going to talk about his shooting of the movie. Let's watch. Now we continue. Five, four, three, two, one. Would you like to do the film again? A film again? Oh, definitely. You know, we really had a, a lot of fun. You know, it was a, a very great experience. You're bringing great people together. Uh, you're creating this, being very creative of everyone. And we just had so much fun on the set. And, um, and, and a very special thank you to that nice board member who paid for the cast party. It's, you know, we're ever indebted and we had a great time. And it brought so many people together. The board members were there. The press was there. And, uh, you know, on Sunday, we all left and said, wow, we're just coming off this big high. We got to do it again. <laughs> yes, you had a, You even had an after party. <laughs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, what is your next film? Uh, well, uh, <clears throat> I don't really have. What I'd like to do is I would like to do the film of the play, Thoughts for a Lost Friend. Mm -hmm. And that was my our last live performance, which was at Whippoorwill Theater, which was dedicated to the American Vietnam veterans, especially to me, uh, MI, MIAs. And it was a very, for me, a very close, I was very close to this actual script. And, um, and it was very well received. We had a lot of uh, veterans attend the play. And it was a new play for me, a new genre. I wasn't quite sure how I could pull this off. And uh, it, I was very pleased to say people were crying in the, during the performance and it was very moving. And actually uh, one, of the, uh, one of the members of the audience came up to me and um, said, you know, he said, I, I fought in Vietnam, I fought in the Tet Offensive. Uh, he said, I, I really thought this was a really gut-wrenching great play. He says, you gotta make a movie out of it. So, uh, so <laughs> Maybe I Maybe Veterans Day. Do it, shoot yeah. it over the summer and do it for Veterans Day. I'm, I'm serious. Excellent. Very good. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah. We, we're trying to pull that together. I'm trying to get the original cast back on that mm -hmm. because they were just uh, just did a great job. And, and, th and that's streaming on our website as well. So that's uh, from the um, from the cinema part. That's what we're working on next. Uh, of course, I'm. Um, uh, and I'm also uh, releasing my, sec my second book, Demi Tass Divorce, for the second edition. Second printing, or is second it a printing. new novel? 
Yes. Is it a second print in it, printing or yeah. is it a new version? A new one. Yeah, it's uh, actually a new version. Um, yeah. When I sent it out, uh, you know, it was, it was very kind. I was most humble. I, I re got, received a lot of good reviews about it. And I wasn't quite sure when I wrote the first one what to put into it. You know, it was a very, for some people, it may be very challenging or maybe a little bit, I wouldn't say disturbing, but may push some people's sensitivities. And I pulled some of the chapters out of it. But when I got, when I received the feedback, I want to put that back in. And this was, I think, will just add more, hopefully will add more to the, more to the book. I and read I it and I thought it touched on a lot of things that really actually happen. Yeah, you know, uh, I, I could say it was a, a story quite close to me. <laughs> well, look, you have to write about what you know. Yeah, you can you always know, tell. <laughs> you can always tell. And um, now, coming along, what is the is the essence of an existential day? Where does the comedy come in, and uh, how does it build? Well, it starts off. Uh, you know, it's it's a very interesting question because when I shared the script to, with one of the board members. Uh, the response is, oh, Richard, really great writer. He says, but I, I don't know. He says, I don't think this is going to work. And I said, I said, wait till you see it. I said, I, you know, I said, what you have to really do is on pieces like that, you have to write with the intent that it forces the actors into the character and they will bring out the humor and how they approach the lines. And he said, all right, I'll, you know, and so when he was watching, you know, when we're shooting it, you know, he pulled me over to the side and he said, um, Rich, you were right. He said, you know, this is, I couldn't see it in the, in the script. He says, but I see it in the performance. So, um, so with that, we kind of took some existential language, which would be somewhat boring, I think, to people who aren't philosophers, mm -hmm. but putting it in a context where it becomes very sexy and seductive, to two aging professors. Right. Well, we have a clip shot on the, the um, iPhone 11 by Chris, and Chris will run it for us and talk a little bit about it. Let's watch. All right. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. And we're back in. So, when does an, ex an existential date? run in the theaters? Well, we're uh, working with a couple of venues right now. We, we're hoping to uh, combine the, um, you know, this uh, premiere with also a fundraiser for mental health. So you know, a raise, uh, as a fundraiser. So we're working with a couple of venues right now and we're, we're just trying to figure out what is the best, uh, the best location at this time. You know, and I would and I would have to say I want to give my special thanks to the Wolf and Warrior before I forget and uh, Michael uh, Chilton, who um, he's been such a supporter over the years. He actually did our we did our first fundraiser there. He uh, did a raffle for us and he actually hosted this um, event for us. So he gave us use of his uh, facilities and I'm forever grateful for that. And uh, you know, uh, so we had a, a lot of people we, I'm very thankful for. So mm -hmm. I, I think once we finish the editing in about a month or two, uh, we're going to make a release and we, it will be in White Plains. I'm just trying mm -hmm. to pick the best venue. Um, do you, now the editing that takes place, I mean, how long uh, do you think, um, what will, how will you uh, contribute to that? Well, uh, what, how does it work? All of, Chris and myself is I, what I like to do is I'll give him the vision and say, this is what I'm expecting. Mm -hmm. And I don't micromanage. Uh, Chris is a very competent person and he listens. So you know, if I just say, this is what I'm looking for and this is important, he just delivers it. And of course, he'll add his uh, experience as a cinematographer. So uh, I, I think between uh, Chris and the digital director, um, Eric Schultz, I think all three of us will be able to turn out a nice edited version. Okay. Well, Richard Cerulli, playwright, author, director, now director, 
you have been heard. Thank you for coming on the program. And we look forward to an existential date. Thank you, John. Thanks for all the support. Right. Have a good evening. Thank you. And as John Bailey saying, good night for people to be heard. Okay, that's it. Very good. We, yeah, we've got about uh, 15 minutes, and I'll slip the clips of Chris in at those Yeah, Chris points. did a very good interview. He Chris was. Came, he, he is. Yeah, Chris was very good. Yeah. Well, so are you. Um, <laughs> did you, is there anything that uh, you wanted to say? I usually give a person a uh, chance to say something at the end, anything you want people to know. But do you have anything more you'd like to say? Sure, just uh, about mental illness in general. Okay, just a second. Um, I, let's start this again. That is my fault, okay. Let's see if I can get this started again. <laughs> Okay, can you hear me? I can hear you. You're still hearing me. Okay, let's see. This appears to be going. Okay, so Richard, is there anything you would like to say? I know you're doing this film to raise funds for mental illness. What, what uh, do you feel people should know about it since you're so familiar with that? Well, you know, first of all, I want to thank all our supporters over the last five years, the Demitas uh, Players has grown quite fast over five years and we be able to brand ourselves. <clears throat> and I really wanna thank all our supporters and my cast and staff, you know, who were work long and hard, basically pro bono. And I just really wanna uh, just reach out to the community. You know, we are a charity and we wanna just reach out and have them support this fundraiser mm -hmm. because mental illness impacts all of us, you know, is the uh, sad statistics. Uh, only 17% of adult Americans qualify for being mentally healthy. And that doesn't include the seven, what they say, cardinal sins, yes. you know? So if you add this into that last 17% and we just watch what's going on in the world today, you, we could actually say there is something wrong with our frail human condition. So I just really want to I hope people watch our, all our works. All our works deal on that theme about how we can improve ourselves. And if we improve ourselves, we can improve the world we live in. So this is something I'm very passionate about and uh, something, a legacy I'd like to leave behind. And um, hopefully when that time comes, I can turn it over to the Young Turks and uh, you know continue on uh, with exactly. the mission. You know, it's, right. uh, so once again, I just really want to thank everyone for all the support. You know, we could have done it without, you know, uh, you know, success is uh, never solo. And uh, so I'm just very grateful for those people in you know, my life who just made it all possible. Okay. Now I wanted to ask you for one little bit about the uh, Demitas players. Tell us how that got started, how it has grown and what's your next production? Okay, uh, <clears throat> the Demitas, uh, actually, uh, it came about by accident, you know, I, uh, you know, I was like, you know, I was married for 30 years. And when you're in marriage, you have the day job and, you know, you work as the engineer, the economist, the professor. But I always had this very creative side in me that I had to really suppress because of, you know, you needed to raise a family. So when I was um, divorced, um, I immediately found myself, I was living in Dutchess County and I was asked to take over the role as the executive director for the Barrett Arts Center. And things mm -hmm. just really fell into place. The next thing I'm this executive director of an art center and uh, I'm presenting at that time my artwork. And there was a place in Poughkeepsie which is out of business called the Demitas Restaurant. Mm -hmm. And it was a place artists would hang out and we had a, it was just a great vibe. And I would probably say I probably spent a lot of, took a lot of dates to that place. And it, but it was just the beginning of, you know, the unveiling of my artistic life. So, uh, so that's how Demitas really got started. And uh, from there, I just 
woke up one morning and said, I think I'm going to write a play. Mm -hmm. And just, and it was, it's kind of funny. I was um, in this relationship and the uh, response was so, you know, you think you're Neil Simon, you know, you think, you know, and I just said, well, I just really want to challenge myself. And I said, joking around that I said, well, the play is at a local high school in White Plains and 10 people show up and five are the custodial staff. I want to consider it a grand slam. You know, I was just considered that I, I'm a playwright. Well, it just picked up so much momentum. I picked up a great cast. We didn't play at the local high school. We played at the premier location, White Plains Performing Arts Center. And then from there, it was just one play after the next and books and then. Right. Well, that's that, it's story. really, I really admire you for pursuing this, uh, pursuing this effort. And we look, what is the next Demitas Players production? Well, we're just uh, waiting to see what happens with COVID. We were uh, supposed to uh, have a, a production at Whippoorwill Theater on April 4th, but that's unlikely. And uh, that was a, actually another comedy play about a, a, a bipolar witch. <laughs> well, that's a great concept. Well, thank you very much for giving us an insight into the Demetrius players and the, uh, the Renaissance man, Richard Cerulli. Thank you, John. Right. Thank you. Oh. Uh, did I say too much? No. Oh. <laughs> no. My feeling is I will take a couple of clips of um, Chris and slip them in at the appropriate times. And oh, good. as a, and you know, I, I just wanted, you know, enough material to fill out the uh, fill out the half hour in case I had underestimated. Okay. Okay. And we'll work it in somehow. But anyway, let's hope that this all got recorded and I will send it to you. <laughs> and uh, it, you always really worry about that. So <laughs> take it easy. Thanks for making the time. I'm sorry about the glitch. I think what happened was that I picked up some noise from the camera on the side that was also shooting. You know, yeah, just, yeah, I think that's yeah, it was odd happened. because then all of a sudden it cleared up like a, yeah. uh, maybe a quarter of the way in. Yeah, I know it was uh, just a, uh... oh look, that's, it's fairly dangerous whenever you're interviewing somebody um, that uh, it just, that, that's another thing. It was really echoey in, in the wolf, but uh, the second half came out all right. Well, listen, thanks a lot and keep me posted on when the, uh, when you're, what you're gonna do with this movie. I mean, would it be, what it would it be, um, be would you be able to have people come in and see it at the performing arts center? Would yeah, you do a drive uh, we, in? Right. Well, you know, we, the first impression we, we thought of doing at the White Plains Performing Arts Center, yeah. and you know, the, I have a good relationship with them, but it seats four hundred and ten people. So if yeah. you get a hundred to this event, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to look like we got bad attendance. Mm -hmm. But you know, so then we. I went to uh, Jim Kenny and I said, well, how do we do it at your place? Mm -hmm. And we kind of tie this in as making a White Plains event, like a White Plains talent. This is what White Plains is doing. It will do it as a fundraiser and we'll have like questions and answers. We'll have it catered. And, uh, and we even have, you know, live music from the band and make it kind of like a social event. So I'm hoping to do that. And I think that's where the first showing will be. Then I'm hoping, I have to start making contacts. So we're gonna put it on YouTube. Uh, we're gonna get a streaming there. I'm trying to get it on Netflix. Yeah. And I'm, if it turns out well, I, which I think it will, I'd like to try to get it at the uh, Jacob Burns. That would be nice. That's what I was gonna say. You know, they're streaming events now. They yeah. made a new relationship. And after it's done, um, you should just shoot it to them. You have nothing to lose. Exactly. Actually, as my father once said, all they can do is say no. Exactly. Exactly. Nothing venture, nothing gained. Or, or they could say, wow, this is terrific. You know, you never know. But yeah, then I can sell what was. <laughs> Did you, uh, were you, <laughs> would you, um, do you remember a movie called The, uh, the uh, Intervention? which was which played in the burns it was done by james james morcone 
No, I missed that one. No, well, I mean, it was about, uh, I forget about how long it was, but the Burns played that one in the main theater. And um, really? Yes, yeah, so, but I think, I haven't seen all of this, but I mean, um, you never know. People, what did the actors think? Did they well, like actually, it? it was actually the actors who told me, they said, Rick, yeah. take it to Jacob Barnes. They said, this is gonna be a, a very good, you know, a very good performance. Yeah. And, you know, quite honestly, I wasn't even thinking of those, in, in those, uh, you know, that parameter, you know, and they said, no, they said, I really think you should take it to Jacob Burns. So um, when I spoke to Chris Casberry, he kind of said, Rich, just slow down. You're moving too quick. You're too aggressive. You're too aggressive. <laughs> and I said, well, you, you can never 16. be too aggressive. Look at AOC. <laughs> you can look, look at AOC. <laughs> she is a house. She is, she's got a talk show ready to go as soon as she leaves Congress. Really? Uh, no, I'm no, I'm just saying she is a great personality, and you get, and you know, I'm just pointing out that you have to speak up because if you don't speak up, no one else will. Exactly. Exactly. Well, anyway, let's end this. This has been fun for me, and I hope it was fun. Likewise, for you. it's always and, a pleasure talking. Yeah, it's yeah, nice it to speak with intellectual yeah. people. I mean, it's it's that that circle gets smaller and smaller by by time. You know, you're right. It's very hard to discuss ideas anymore. Can't discuss and the ideas. loss. This course. Yes. The loss of theater, the loss of performance, the, the, the reducing entertainment to, to uh, Netflix has been a tremendous loss. There is so much bad, repetitive movies oh. on Netflix. Have you noticed the similarity between all the mysteries? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. It's the same plot, same. you know? There's nothing yes. new, there's nothing creative. And, there's and, no there's romantic nothing... involvement between the principles. You yeah, can't- Yeah, you know, that, uh, uh, is that yeah. something? You know, it's yeah. funny to say that. Over the weekend, I watched this very old movie, old movies from the 80s. Yeah. And it was with Susan Sarandon and James Spader. Yeah. White Palace. Yeah. It was, and it was a small, small budget movie, yeah. you know, yeah. which I love movies like that. No, no big scenes or everything else. Yeah. It's just so. And it's about a, uh, a very rich, wealthy 27 year old executive who, who falls in love with a 43 year old woman who's a, waitress yeah <laughs> you know just you know, different worlds different age different yeah. social class different thing and things like that are really intriguing you know yeah. and i i watched a movie and you know i just said oh, i like this you know yeah. it, it, you know it, it challenges you know conventional thinking yes it does but i find i'm watching something called uh uh, a de new detective series. Oh, I'm watching this thing called Borgen, um, which uh, is all about Denmark and the woman prime minister in Denmark. And I mean, it just goes on and on. It doesn't, and the woman keeps making really bad choices. <laughs> and I'm saying, wait a minute, you know, what can I say? But I, the lack of of decent romantic relationships in these. And if it is a romantic relationships, they always were end badly, badly, which yeah, yeah. I, I don't like. Mm. So, uh, <laughs> but anyway, well, that's it for now. So take it easy, have a good rest of the week and uh, we'll be talking. yourself safe. Right, so long Thank for you. Now. Thanks, John. Thanks for everything. Right, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.